Wisconsin. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report, folks. He puts out a new issue every Monday morning. He has updates throughout the week. When warranted, when you sign up for Teddy's service, folks, you can access it under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You can subscribe for $97 a month. And folks, basically that's 29 days that you get to try out this newsletter. It comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, just let us know. You get a refund, you get the newsletter for 29 days, you gain access to his webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, what's behind the Tiger Forex Report newsletter. And like we always say, man, it's an especially interesting time to put it lightly in the Forex market. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. First, I want to give, extend my condolences to uh, David White's family and to you guys on your loss recently. I appreciate it, man. You know, it's 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 he's been around for almost decades, which is remarkable, Teddy, and a young guy. And um, it's 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 with us all for a little while, to put it to mm -hmm. put it lightly. And I appreciate it, man. You know, it's it's boy life sometimes, man. It's 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 uh, yeah, I struggle with the words, but I appreciate it, man. Uh, we didn't talk to you last Wednesday. I had some technical issues, I think. Man, we haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks. It's been cut up, cut quite a couple of weeks in this market, Teddy. We talked to you on a very important day. I love that we talked to you on Wednesdays, man, because usually we got some good action going on. Where do you want to kick things off in this market, Teddy? Well, it's Fed Day, so in the next couple hours is going to be a ho hum trade. I would think I wouldn't have any too. I wouldn't have any big ex expectations until later. Um, but we have, you know, what a storm we have brewing. You have uh, unemployment, I mean, excuse me, of inflation running in the UK that blew out expectations, you know, at over 10%. Yeah. So, which is something that we've been talking about for a while that their numbers are not getting better. They're only getting worse, you know. So that's going to have a big impact. And we had the pound that spiked high today. <clears throat> I'm surprised that they're not selling off much more than they have. But I think a lot of that might be because it's Fed Day. Now we're coming into that window where until 2 o'clock. <clears throat> our time Chicago or excuse me 115 Chicago time we're not going to know anything you know so now here comes the big question is what, is, what are they going to do well they can't I would say that they can't end their resolve I mean with the way we were looking before this banking crisis started two weeks ago was that you know we went from having them supposedly stopping uh, raising to possibly cutting at the end of the year to having now all of a sudden half and three quarter point raises for the rest of the year so I think that you're, you're probably going to see today is a quarter point raise um, I would be really shocked if they didn't do anything um, because that sends really mixed signals you know, um, the reality is, is that they have to keep with their program um, just for them to, I think, even show faith in the banking industry as it is. I mean, that's a whole nother ball of wax. I mean, when you look at how this started, you know, SVB, what's what's the, ir the irony of it all is one of the guys that was the top guys at Lehman Brothers is one of the top guys there. So this is a do over, you know. So and it also shows that the compliance at the high, highest part of the banking level is atrocious in this country. I mean, the fact that banks have zero reserves when they should be functioning on at least 10%, you know, and the fact that they were allowed to run at that, and then the way they, I mean, what bank didn't wasn't liquidating their bond portfolios a year ago when they knew the Fed was going to be raising rates for a year? We've had the most transparent Fed in U.S. history, or at least in my lifetime, and <clears throat> how could you make that mistake? You're either the biggest idiot in the world or you're just stealing and you're just not, you don't really care about what you're doing. That's why I love talking business. to you, man, because I agree. You know, people get, I'm not sure if you heard Kevin Hinks saying, you know, it's it's just to not hedge that, man. And, you know, there's all yeah. this rhetoric and I feel like it gets played out in, in not even the financial media, man, like the mainstream media. And that's a bad term in my mind. But, you know, I'm talking right. about NBC Nightly News where you just get the headlines. And yeah, it's like, oh, rates have risen and the banks are in trouble. It's like, man, if you know what's going on, it's like this bank was right. ridiculous. You know, it's like yeah. I wouldn't get Teddy. I joke. My mom's retired. She's in her 60s. And I said, I couldn't myself be a proponent. Of course, she has some fixed income, you know. But why mm -hmm. were you buying one percent yield long duration, man? Right. Even as a retiree, I'm like, what if you need that money, let alone being a bank and doing it with one hundred billion dollars right. and not hedging your risk? It's like, come right. on, man. Exactly. Um, exactly. So. And I agree. It's like I was trying to do these gymnastics. And last night I finally got to it where I said he can't pause, man, because there's no way that this banking crisis alone, folks, is enough conviction to squash inflation. And maybe it helps. OK, and maybe it does. But you just mm -hmm. can't make that leap, I think, in the chairman's role um, with where we are, because we haven't gotten a lot of inflation data really since he spoke two weeks ago. We've gotten the banking crisis, but mm -hmm. the inflation data has to come, man, before I think he can make that leap. 
which mm-hmm. is man, oh man, we're going to get to find mm-hmm. out. Now, where, where do think, you see? I, I think that this is really actually going to impact the interest rates for a while, too, because think about this. If banks are all functioning on zero, they have no reserves. That means they can't borrow money from the Fed when they when they issue loans. How are they going to be lending to people in the more in a mortgage market where rates are going higher and you're already having an issue yep. getting them financed? So, Definitely. but this is going to affect the dollar too. So, as long as they stay on the path that we let's remove the banking crisis and go back to our theory that we were <clears throat> on before, you know, for the past couple of months, if they remain on the hiking basis, I think the dollar is going to stay firm. I wouldn't say it's very bullish. Now, we've been talking about divergence in the markets already for a while, and you can see it's very representative. Where the dollar index right now, a lot of the lift it's, or the, where it's fallen back recently was because of the rally in the euro and the pound. Okay, If you look at a lot of the other currencies, they're very sideways. I mean, you look at the U.S. dollar Canada, even though it made some new weekly and monthly highs recently, it's still in a very big wide range trade for the past six, seven months. Nice you know, sense. so, you know, I mean, like, and that's the, that's a perspective I think people really need to start to look at. And I think we're going to still see this over the next couple of months, because now we have so many variables globally, financially, economic, you know, it's 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 almost like how are you going to establish a true trend? You know, so I think the long term trends that are in place are going to stay somewhat together. The, the intermediate term, you're going to see, I think, more of a directionless trade, you know, and you're going to have, you're going to have a lot of short term moves, but in short lived as well. So I think that people have to be very cognizant of that. I'm not saying volatility is going down, but you can have high volatility and the market really doesn't go anywhere, you know. Yes. So, I mean, and that's that's something I think we have to really pay attention to, you know, especially, you know, when you look at a lot of the commodity markets and stuff like that as well, because, you know, what people don't realize is. Right now, the Fed is buying back these assets from the banks, and the irony is they're not even buying them at the market price. They're buying them at the prices that these banks bought them at. So yeah. that's that, that's a huge loss. So that's also a big liquidity factor. It's going to start being you're, you're adding lots of liquidity in one direction, but it's really, really going to draw out liquidity because these guys are going to be under the gun now. Do you think that they're going to be able to just be speculating and, and um, entering the markets and the derivatives markets like they've been doing? Absolutely not. They didn't hedge themselves what they were supposed to do. We know that they were definitely double leveraged on certain things where they were actually gambling, you know. So, and that's going to be, I think, for volume in a lot of markets, it's going to start to tighten up in a big way. Yeah, it would have been pretty interesting to right see see some of the CEOs of these big banks watching. You think with you know we're watching Chairman Powell's press conferences with interest, folks. Uh, nobody had any idea how important these banks were watching probably those press conferences, hoping for a pause or a pivot that they just never got, man, and they mm-hmm. just didn't hedge. Uh, and great point about the the market. Just look at the S&P from where we were. Pretty interesting, Teddy. We're basically right back to where we were when Chairman Powell spoke 15 days ago at about right. 4,040, 4,080. Meanwhile, we were approaching almost 3,800 in this market. So, yeah, right back mm-hmm. to where we are. And you're talking about 5% swings. Can you hang with us, Teddy, for a few minutes? Sure, sure. Okay, we'll finish up the program, folks. we got a few more things to talk Sounds about. Good. I want to talk about uh, yields, interest Great. rates as we go forward. We'll be right back with Teddy. Stay tuned, folks. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Please check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. I got a chart of the 10-year up here, Teddy, but I just want to talk a little bit about the general idea of where you think maybe rates may go. I know you look at the 30-year very well in the Tiger Forex report. Everybody's interested in rates. Quite the moves we've had recently. Uh, if the Fed goes 25, I know things can change a lot. But where do you see interest rates going from here? Do you see that number rising? Do you, does the banking crisis kind of put a halt on it, no matter what the Fed is doing in the interim? Or where do you see? I mean, quite the volatile market, mm-hmm. to say the least. Sure. OK, well, you know, the, the rally that we've seen started two weeks ago. And it started when the SVB first came to light. OK, and the bonds really rallied off that swing. That swing low was locked pretty hard. And since then, it's gone nothing but higher and higher and higher. I mean, you had a twelve dollar rally in, in the course of only a week and a half. Wow. And this was not because of any Fed number or anything like that. This and this this is when I remember when it first came out they, that weekend, people are like, oh, here's another bank. I'm like, this is not just one bank. This is a, this is system wide. And they're like, yeah. why can you you can't just be that 
that presumptuous on that. I'm like, the bonds made a move like that. This is big money. The big money knows what's going on. You don't right. have a bond move like we've had like that. So that being said, even if the Fed doesn't do anything today, I think you're going to see yields going up because this has been an over-exacerbated rally. It was flight to quality. Now yeah. things are calming down. So unless things get worse, see, I mean, that's the reality. Either things are going to get worse and we're going to be like, oh, my God, this is such a huge problem, which they're going to cover this up and try and keep this subdued as much as they can. You know, yeah. and if that's and if that's the case, well, then the market has to go. If, even if they don't raise rates, the, the, the pricing should be lower, meaning yields should be higher. And if they raise a quarter point or more, well, then that low from a couple of weeks ago. I mean, look out, baby, we're taking that thing out because the expectations nice. will be that the Fed is still going to keep doing that. Yeah. We get to find out at 2 o'clock, man. Quite an interesting market. Teddy, and that's I good for the dollar, too. Sorry, real quick. No, I like it, man. Good for, for the dollar, dollar as well. Uh, listen, I appreciate the time, as always, man. doesn't get much busier than Fed Day. Please, folks, right now, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Hit the newsletter tab. Try out the Tiger Forks report. 30 days. Money back guarantee. It's a great time to do it. Teddy, man, I appreciate it. You have a great Thanks, day. Tommy. I'll talk to you, you next too. Wednesday, brother. Sounds okay. great. Folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. It's going to be a great day in the markets, folks. It's Fed Day. Don't go away. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everybody.